Hey, how's it going guys? Jack and Matty with the Toasty Bros. And today we're gonna to be building our own mini gaming PC and this one's actually gonna be pretty good. Yeah, this thing is the ASRock Desk Meet, which is a slightly bigger than normal mini PC, but it comes with a motherboard that you can plop in CPU, RAM, graphics card, and already comes with a power supply. And you'll be able to make a gaming PC for about 500 bucks or less. But before we put this thing together, let's hear a word from today's sponsor. Are you tired of your unactivated Windows install on your gaming PC? Well, today's video sponsor, GVG Mall, has you covered. GVG Mall is an online marketplace to gain access to really awesome discounted game keys and more specifically as we mentioned Windows 10 licenses. It is incredibly easy to get your Windows 10 or 11 activation key from GVG Mall. Just use code TB20 to get a special discount and then all you have to do is take that code, put it into Windows and boom you have an activated Windows copy. We have been working with GVG Mall for several years now and we love the reliability of all the products they have to offer so be sure to check the link in the description down below. Use code TB20 to save on your next purchase of a Windows key or other product from GVG Mall. So you're probably wondering what exactly is the appeal of this mini PC because for one, it's not quite a handheld and for two, it is kind of like halfway built but kind of halfway not built. So the main appeal is the fact that the actual platform itself with the power supply and motherboard and the case is actually a pretty good deal when you really do the math. And on top of that, you guys will really like the upgrade path that it actually has and the support that it already has with Gen 4 and everything like that. But I really do think it's gonna be pretty sweet considering its size factor. It looks like it has pretty good breathability. And like Matt said, you're on 500 bucks, give or take, and you can do all different kinds of configuration at home. And you really can't mess this thing up. That's the only nice part. It's not like building a full PC from scratch. And you know what? If you happen to do this yourself and maybe it looks a little intimidating to you, we're going to show you exactly how to do it step by step because again, it is pretty straightforward. The motherboard is already there. We just got to put the CPU in, the storage, and the graphics card, plug everything up, and we're good to go. So let's just take this thing apart and see what's inside. All right. So we just have to take out one screw. Just should be this one on the bottom. You take off this one screw down here and then I was trying to slide it this way you need to slide it this way look how much easier that is the case is I like this it's all one piece you can take the front off that plastic comes right off but as you can see it's just like an IO cover with the power button so that's pretty sweet that it's just one piece that's a lot easier than a normal PC build power supply we have a channel well technology you might be looking at that thing and wow that thing is just scary channel well is actually an OEM brand so they're not too bad it's 80 press bronze rated 500 watts which is pretty impressive for a system this small and the cool part this is a full-size power supply. Mm -hmm. Power supply has a reverse fan that pulls air in and actually, since there's no fans in this thing, acts as a fan for the build. I, they probably have it figured out better than we do. Obviously, the power supply is going to make some hot air, so it is kind of pulling in some warm air mm -hmm. to cool it, but I'm sure they have it figured out pretty well where that actually makes sense. Now, to actually upgrade this thing, we're going to have to remove this power supply, which just, wow, they actually did the two-screw method. Look mm -hmm. at that. Two screws to get to it, and then that's how we're actually going to get to our CPU. Yeah, yeah. none of it comes in, uh, plugged in. It's just kind of like a bare chassis. I'm going to go ahead and take this out because I kind of want to see the rest of the board. Uh, B660. Yep. That's impressive. So we're going to get our Gen 4 support out of the box. And that, that in theory means we can actually go to 13th Gen unless it's already updated, which could be. So yeah, it's a B660 ITX and by the looks of it, it's a very standard board. This is our front I or not our front IR, our, our front panel, I guess you'd call it. Oh yeah, power button. It is. Okay, our, our like front panel, our front header, if we want to call it. And it's on one little hub. We have a full-size X16 Gen 4 PCIe lane. We have a Gen 4 M.2 slot, but the looks of it's just one. We do have four RAM slots. That's impressive. That kind of almost unexpected on a mini ITX board, like four RAM yeah. slots. Full 24 pin and eight pin. So like I said, you could really go up to like a, I mean, as you can see, LJ1700, 1800, you could go up to like a 13700 on this if you wanted to. Obviously, you'd have to go with the bigger power supply or lesser GPU so you can get it all in 500 watts, but that's pretty crazy. I don't see anything else too different, but upgrading this thing looks like it's gonna be really freaking easy. What we're gonna be doing, we're gonna show you guys how to do it. We're gonna add this M.2, super simple. This is probably gonna be like the most intermediate part is going to be adding this i3, but once again, it's really simple and the cooler. And then we're gonna show you how to add the 1660. All right, so i3, what is this, 12100? Four core, eight thread, we probably got an F, I yep. assume. Yep, 12400 AF, and that's a four core eight thread, which is a really like one of the most powerful four core eight threads in the market. I know some of you might be like, oh, the Ryzen 4100, blah, blah, blah. It's no, nah, nothing compares to that because you got Gen 4 support. Um, and I think in theory, they might, do these have Gen 5 support technically once it comes out? Uh, I, thought I they don't did, know. I, I don't think, know. I thought the Intel platform did. So these Yeah, I, I thought it did, but I mean, that's obviously a little, little ways away. So our i3 is out of the clamshell. It's not gonna have any thermal paste on it or anything unless you buy a used one. So we're gonna open our slot up. I usually don't even look at the arrow anymore. I look at these little tabs and I can right away tell, oh yeah, the tabs need to go on this side. Make sure you don't put your thumb <laughs> straight into those pins. And I just kind of drop it in. You don't want to push or anything. I got really lucky that time it dropped right in. Sometimes you have to kind of use your finger and kind of like nudge it where you want it. For the latch, 
I usually do two hands. Sometimes it just pops out. This one is, oh my God, that, that one did not want to come out. Sometimes they just pop right out, they're supposed to. But look at that, it's nice and installed. Let's do our cooler real quick, that's gonna be pretty easy. So this is our LGA 1700, 1800 cooler. It's pretty sweet, I actually really like these. I don't think you could, should really get a bigger cooler for this. No, you'd have to get one of those fancy low profile mini ITX coolers and I don't really know how much. They might cooling. be worse. Yeah, they might end up being worse <laughs> overall, so. Now, this is just something I do. I like hiding the cable, but you really wanna be careful doing this method because you could accidentally get the cable stuck underneath the actual CPU and then you're not going to get some you're not going to get very good cooling so I usually check too I like to kind of pull on one side make sure it's not being held down yep feels good all right so you're going to do opposing corners I already pushed down this one so now I'm going to push down this one and it should already feel nice and sturdy make sure these are turned clockwise mm. to the right otherwise they're not going to snap down looks like a tight spot to plug yeah in. I probably should plug in first so you do want to make sure I'm going to get the camera real good here for Matt you see this one that's a CPU fan can you see that mm -hmm. you want to make sure you get it into that one if you plug into the other one you're gonna have errors and also the CPU fan header which is this four pin is dependent on the CPU temperature so if you have a plugged into the system fan header your CPU fan will probably not spin at the right speed could overheat so now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I think I'm gonna hand over to Matt for where's our RAM why right here oh I forgot about it. I, I literally named everything oh. except RAM. We have so, RGB RAM. So the reason we had RGB, you guys buy something else. Uh, it was just shipping <laughs> delays. It was yeah, what we had on hand. You guys don't do this. Yeah, but I wouldn't recommend it because you just won't see the RGB. You better see it through the sides and the top, yeah. But right, it is no. just 16 gigs, 3200 megahertz RAM. So. so what we have right here, guys, is Team Group, uh, 16 gigs, 3200 megahertz, white RGB RAM. I really don't recommend getting RGB. Save some money, get some basic RAM. But this is what we had to do with the shipping delays we've been dealing with. We're going to go ahead and install the RAM. And I'm going to assume it is one in three for this one. Usually it's the furthest, like towards the 24 pin, but it could be you totally different. You know what, different. we're gonna do two and four. All right, so what you're gonna do, make sure the slot lines up with the notch. Out of curiosity, could you get this in DDR5 or was it only DDR4? It was only DDR4, okay. so they only had this in the B660 and they also have an AM4 one. Oh, that's cool. So you can go Ryzen if you want to, um, which obviously that is definitely DDR4. Yeah, we went the B660 because that was the newest and the price was about the same. I think this whole kit without the RAM and everything was $180. So uh, we went basic with the SSD. We were trying to make this thing as budget as possible because at some point there's a point of return where you're just like, you know, might as well build a full gaming PC. So we went kind of budget with this stuff. We got a used GPU and such, but we have a 512 gig NVMe SSD. It's just Gen 3. You can get Gen 4 for a little bit more or the same price sometimes just do a little deal hunting at the time of playing this video this was the best option so we're going to pop out our nvme ssd and there's this little slot right here that says hyper m.2 there's no screw in there already so i'm probably just going to grab one of our screws but it should come with the packaging i probably just lost it when i was opening this thing up i'll be perfectly honest with you so go ahead and put that in right there and then what you do is push this down and screw in your m.2 right here now with these you don't want to like screw them down super tight just literally like hand tight i've had people literally strip these off and we have to repair them here so yeah and that's it oh wait i'm like totally touching my microphone. And that's all you have to do to install the NVMe. And if for some reason you wanted to go really budget and you just wanted to get a CPU with the integrated graphics, you're good there. You don't have to add a graphics card. But I think the beauty of this thing is the fact that you could add a compact card like this 1660 Super, which Jackson will talk about here in a second. Mm -hmm. So now we're gonna install the 1660 Super. Now, I do agree with Matt. There's no point in getting a system this big if you're not gonna put in a GPU. If you're, if you're gonna do like an APU system, there's some really cool other builds that I, I can't even think of the companies right now, but yeah, like um, they're Mini's Forms and smaller. stuff like that, where you can get like literally the actual system system's not much bigger than this graphics card, you might as well just get one of those if you're gonna do an APU, but you know, with one this size, it has to have a GPU, right? I can already tell just by looking, by the way, we're gonna have to break off both of these lanes. It is a two lane card and we only have two lanes, so. These Zotac cards are awesome because they're really small. All these 1660 series, I think they have a peel yeah. on them too somewhere. Yeah, it does, it has peel here. But... So just make sure that this slot, see how this, just make sure it's open. And uh, that's actually not too tight of a fit. I thought it was gonna be a little bit worse than this. It, it, fit, oh, it fills this nicely. we need nicely. to get this out too. Oh, I didn't even notice that. So this is a, a latch. Actually, wow, that's satisfying. So we're gonna pull that, uh, it's, it's toolless. And now, so I kind of get it lined up looks like we're good Ooh, nice click so we're looking good on that once again toolless just make sure that all your slots are accessible and usable now this gpu is going to use an eight pin make sure that we're looks like we're nice and clear here fans are good that's awesome so i guess i'll go ahead and get this back in and it doesn't look like there's anything else because they already did the front panel for us so we already got the fan plugged in we should just put a plug in this power supply stuff now so we're going to plug in our 24 pin you guys are just going to have to kind of trust me on this one because it's hard for me to show you but 24 pin plugged in good to go here's our gpu power yeah it's going to be 
some stretch for some of this stuff. So GPU power, we're gonna put these together. This is a six plus eight. We need all eight. Don't try to put any less than eight because your PC's not gonna be happy, okay? PC's gonna explode, that's what's gonna happen. There we go. Our eight pins plugged in, and then we need to plug in our CPU eight pin, which I'm super hyped that this actually has an eight pin for the CPU and the GPU. All right, so now we wanna make sure that all these cables aren't like straight in our CPU. So I'm just gonna kind of hold all these like this. I'm holding them up. We're gonna make sure the CPU one doesn't go in there either. It's so satisfying how tight of a fit it is, but it just- It's like satisfying, but a little bit scary because yeah. I'm just like, man, I literally can't see. Now make sure you reinstall the fan the right way because like I said, if they, they might really have this figured out with the- uh, The temperatures and stuff. Yeah. So. Which I'm thinking about too, which way does the CPU fan on these go? Do they pull air in? in. That's yes. good. I would yes. say if they was pushing it out, yeah, then it would be literally be, be battling. An dual. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of weird because it does support an SFF power supply. If you wanted to get one yourself, you could give yourself more room, maybe, you know, a little more ventilation space, but it does have the mounts for a full size, which I think is really cool. Save yeah. you a lot of money too. All right, so our power supply is plugged in, but we still do have, like we said, one little problem at hand, and that's just making sure we cable manage a little bit the best we can. Oh, see that's already going to be a problem. <laughs> I might be able to... Eh, can nope. that zip tie come off? Maybe be professional. I think I might be able to just take these two off and then I can kind of bend it. All right, so I kind of just tucked in these cables here. Now we just need to try to make sure. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm going to take... Because it is... It's not in the fan, but I think it's a hazard. I think it could go in the fan. I'm going to run this on the side. Come on. Oh, I got it. There we go. So now we're on the side. Now I'm pretty confident. And obviously we're going to turn the system on and we'll be able to see... Let's go ahead and put in these two screws again. Now, another thing that's kind of cool about this system is uh, it does have an M.2 Wi-Fi and Bluetooth card already installed. I'm assuming it's probably like a Wi-Fi 6E or something like that too. I mean, since it's pretty new. It's a B660. Yeah, so. yeah, they probably use something pretty nice in it. But all right, um, cable management is actually not bad. I didn't use a single zip tie, but I think it looks good. Now, before we put this on, I'm gonna be like extra safe and just, just turn, turn this on. on. Yeah. You guys are able to see how to turn it on too. Yep, so our power button is flipped to the on position. We're gonna press that tiny little nub. And our RGB RAM should come on. You guys probably won't have RGB RAM, so. But that's usually a pretty good sign that like yeah. the system's working. Um, our NVMe is in there. Another way we can really tell if it's working before it's plugged in. Once it's, so right now we don't have Windows. It's gonna go to the like BIOS splash screen or the black screen that says, please insert a USB. You should be able to press the power button really quick and it should just turn right off if it's working. Nice. There we go. Good sign. So pretty confident it's working. Let's go ahead and get this back on. This will take about two seconds because it just kind of slides. All right, so now we're just going to turn it over uh, right there. And we need to grab one more screw. But yeah, now that this is loaded up, what we're going to go ahead and do is install Windows, install some games, and then just see how it performs. Obviously, temperatures will be a big thing we keep an eye on with this compact of a system. But the fact that this is compact and also cheap, normally when you go really small like this, you're paying a premium. But I'd be hard pressed for you to be able to spend about the same, if not a little bit more, uh, to build it on like a custom system, honestly. The price is actually really good at just under $500, especially with the used GPU. So let's install some games to see what she can do. Woo. All right, guys, we're playing some Overwatch 2.0. We're actually playing ranked so we can get the most playable realism experience, but ultra. we're on ultra settings. Woo! Hanzo. How dare you guys escape me. Dude, these guys are like dancing circles around me, dude. <laughs> Teammates, please, someone help me. Someone help me. Get this bouncy guy. Show me a little wise, looks like. That's pretty wise. Wise. That was wise. Wise AF. Is he really gonna get away off that, dude? Oh, Lucio ulted him? Oh no, where did, dude, how does this guy jump so high? Yeah, you think you're gonna res? Uh-uh. <laughs> yeah. oh, 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 I'm not gonna make it. Dang it. Nice and it probably wouldn't have killed him anyways, but it definitely would have hurt. Oh, he's got a oh this is the guy that can shoot through my, my shield, dude. I hate this guy. Oh, but he's... You're not rezzing again, Mercy. Don't even think about it. I will kill you. <laughs> Quit shooting me, Widow. You're making me <laughs> upset. Oh, oh. Get, get her, get, get her. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The old Someone words. get the Mercy. Someone get the Mercy. I oh. can't catch her. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, woo! I don't even think I got her, but I'll take it. Ooh, ain't it a heal? Let's go. Yeah. Get pinned. Oh, look at that. Hey, I took what a great victory. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this thing maintained pretty solid temperatures. Highest the GPU got was about 81C. We are going to play some Warzone, though, which will definitely stress this thing even more, and we'll see how that works out. But so far, pretty solid in play of the game. Oh, yeah. This didn't really feel like play of the game. No, it was it, a very average run. But yeah, let's go ahead and go on to the next game, guys. Next game. 
All right, gamers, we are now in War Zone. We are on the balanced preset, which is a pretty good representation of uh, medium settings. And uh, we're getting 60 plus FPS, about an 80 FPS average to be exact. Um, so yeah, we'll drop into the actual game here to see if that holds up, but I'm really impressed with this little box. I was really worried that it would run very hot and we would have a lot of thermal throttling, but the CPU is running at its 4.1 gigahertz with the stock cooler. The GPU is getting a little warm, about 82, 83C. This is gonna be probably worst case scenario for this thing, but it isn't at the point yet where it's gonna be down clocking too much. So I'm, I'm really impressed. It is a very small car too. It doesn't have like a lot of ventilation. So um, yeah, I'm actually really impressed with the system overall. And I think just because of the price and the fact that Building this on your own would probably cost about the same as buying this little kit and you get a small form factor PC. Pretty dang cool if you ask me. Oh no, I ain't gonna, I'm gonna, I ain't gonna survive this. I don't know what that guy was doing. I have no idea, but he may have just baited me. Let's find out. Oh, I found my enemy. He's gonna run around this corner and he's gonna get a surprise. Where'd my man go? He juked me. Oh man, he's gonna find me and kill me and I ain't gonna be happy about it. Oh, nice try, buddy. Oh no, I hear there's an open mic. I'm scared. Oh, open mic guy. He missed every shot. I heard him armoring up. Hmm, interesting. Oh. I don't think that guy, oh, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die right here. Is he in here? Oh, where'd my mans go? I'm really bad at locating people today. Well, I have no idea where that guy went, but you know what? The performance in Warzone is pretty dang good. 60 plus FPS, uh, some dips here and there, but we're on balance, so you could go lower settings and get, I imagine a locked 80 to 90 FPS, which is more than playable in opinion, uh, especially for like a $450 computer. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna switch to, to some built-in benchmarks and really pushes things to its limits and uh, just wrap this video up real quick because I really wanna see what this max thermal headroom is for this uh, CPU and GPU combo, but so far, it's looking pretty solid. Okay, smoky. What, what were you, Smokey, Smokey, what were you doing? Let's, let's wrap this video up real quick. All right guys, we just got done benchmarking one of the smallest but most powerful PCs we've had in a while. And the fact that we got to kind of halfway build it was really cool. It was very easy, took us about 10 minutes total as opposed to 30 to an hour to build a PC with similar specs. And the crazy part is the price, a little under 500 bucks, we really did get pretty much everything we wanted and it's small and compact. Yeah, you don't normally get really compact systems like this for as cheap as we paid for it, under $500. You do have to do some deal hunting for the graphics card as well, but you can find 1660 Supers for around 120 to $130. Those things think it's a really good value card, especially for Nvidia, because Nvidia stuff is normally pretty expensive. But if you want to do this yourself, check the links down below. They will be affiliate links and they will help us out. Let us know what you think of this mini PC. Would you go this route or would you rather just build a normal desktop tower? Let us know in the comment section down below. So as always, we hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, check out our other two YouTube channels and also our twitch.tv slash toasty bros. And do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye Now this small but mighty PC will be over at PC Bros. It's fully tested. It's gonna have Windows fully installed, activated, ready to go, and a one-year warranty. PC Bros. Tech, we sell gaming PCs, we sell gaming laptops, we sell full gaming setups, and we sell so much more. And if you use code ToastyBros2 on checkout, you'll save 2% off this little guy or anything in the store. PC Bros. Mm -hmm. Tech, see you guys later. Goodbye. Peace out.